I now invite uh, Mr. Rajani to share his views and thoughts. Hi, good afternoon. I'll be quick and get off this podium as soon as possible before you all leave the room because even I'm very bored because uh, now as a utility we keep hearing all of this. So there are just three quick points. You know, I have a reputation to keep to speak very fast, which I always do. So I have three quick points as a utility and I'll be very brief on that. One is, you know, any normal utility would go and compare technologies in terms of, uh, uh, as my friend, a uh, friend from China said whether PLC and RF and so on and so forth. Apple to Apple comparisons, the normal uh, criteria would be to check on reliability, scalability, blah, blah, and all of those, of course. The key point that I'm trying to make is at the end of the day, and this is, for example, one of uh, the very significant comparisons that we read based on technical performance, uh, interoperability, scalability, total cost of ownership, and so on and so forth. The first point that I'm trying to make is it has to be whatever adoption or whatever technology solution vendor has to be based on the use cases, you know, the specific use cases of the utility. And let me enumerate that by a good example. Reliance Energy Mumbai, uh, very similar to Tata, you know, has uh, very low loss levels, about 8%. Uh, we have complete energy audit and actually we have more than 100% collection efficiency. We collect more than typically what we will because consumers pay us in advance. Our neighbor MSC DCL, they issued uh, uh, an RFP uh, for smart meters and they got smart meters, less than 1,000 rupees. I'll come to the price point later. And these were without remote connect and disconnect. Now in Reliance Mumbai, we have about 700 thousand operations uh, out of two and a half million consumers about actually going to the site, issuing a notice for disconnection, payment and so on and so forth, disconnecting the fuse and again going and reconnecting the fuse. The point I'm trying to make is if we order a meter without remote connect and disconnect, for example, as some other utility has done, we would not meet our use case because our significant return on investment is derived from you know, not having a person going on the field just to you know, connect the fuse or disconnect the fuse and so on and so forth. So that's point number one. Point number two, quickly, you know, at the end of the day, I think my friend Eric spoke, Rahul also spoke about uh, service, my friend from Oracle. I mean, we are not into the electricity distribution business. What, we are the, what business we are in is in the business of service to the consumers. And up until now, utilities have really not been engaging the consumers. So at the end of the day, if the technology doesn't allow one to engage with our consumers, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Here is an example. So, you know, what do these have in common? And uh, all of these, you know, were uh, whatever. They're obsolete now, but they were converted into digital devices and then into services. So we have, for example, uh, carried out a pilot for a consumer portal whereby we allow the consumer to engage and uh, you know, better engage with their own energy consumption because I know for a fact most of you would know how much or what cellular plan you are on, but most of you would not know what was your last month's meter reading data. And that includes me. I mean, I mean if anyone knows here, great, raise their hand and then I'm wrong, but then I, I do not know of anybody who has looked at the bill and said, look, I've consumed this much. But more often, we, of course, know, you know, we filled up gas in our car and so on and so forth. So we need to get on second point first consumer. And third, of course, uh, uh, before I get down to my third point, uh, all of this has to be derived by at what value does it give it to your organization. So, for example, we at Reliance carried out a business process reengineering with the help of uh, our friends at SAP. And we looked at, you know, what gave us the best value, the key strategic value, and what was most feasible. And that kind of gave us a quadrant as to the technologies or the solutions that we need to adopt at the base of value. Uh, of course, some key stakeholders, in the benefit of time, I will skip this since this presentation would be distributed, but it needs to be looked at from the three perspectives of customers, network, and business. Uh, so what's the strategy? Uh, before we look at that, uh, of course, I couldn't resist myself in talking about, uh, uh, as an example, let's take 
ESL, although I didn't want to name, but then so be it. Uh, you know, in this country, we have talked so much about uh, price. Uh, smart meters should be at X price, Y price. And I may just give an example. We had a very large tender for 2G uh, communication module, GPRS in meters. And later on, subsequently, it was upgraded to 3G based on largely a lot of uh, conversing from ISGF. The, the fact of the matter is, within two years, even 3G will not exist. With spectrum re-farming, you know, the telcos are gonna, and I'm gonna be wrong here because it won't be two years. Within the next year, and I also belong to the telco, there will not be any 3G and 2G. The, the telcos will use the same spectrum to offer LT. What happens to the price then? You just go ahead, and that's the largest smart metering tender, and uh, so what happens to the price then? Right, you know, of course, uh, Friendcom, of course, our friendly Chinese friend, I mean, no, no prejudice here, but uh, as far as security goes, of course, people have concerns where communication is concerned that A, one should have complete control over the technology, IPR, the firmware, so on and so forth. The largest uh, smart meter tender that we had, uh, there is no Western company that manufactures 2G or even 3G chipsets for cellular. They don't do that. The last is Qualcomm, but it's a fabulous company. So, uh, I mean, so much for security. Ecosystem, uh, some of my friends earlier spoke, consumer services. I mean, we can't just have smart meters without upstream and downstream services. So I'm not talking technology, I'm just, you know, focusing on uh, the uh, other non-technology considerations. SLA requirements are uh, very important, but before I come to that contractual terms, again, uh, there was again one of the largest uh, smart meter AMI tenders. And the contractual terms for the SLA, the penalty terms, are only on or largely on the FMS, which forms 10% of the contract value. So what we are trying to say is, for example, if the value was about 100 rupees, the penalty is only on 10 rupees and it's maximum up to 10%. So the overall penalty is one to 2% of the overall contract value. We are not looking at the data. The SLA does not speak, you know, if, if for example, the utility would have said, look, I'm not buying smart meters, I'm only buying data and we will pay you for this frequency of data that would have perhaps made more sense. That's my last point that I wish to make. Uh, of course, one of the trends that's been happening is to use a common network for multiple applications and not have a bespoke network for smart meters, a separate network for other smart city applications and so on and so forth. Wanted to touch on this. There's, uh, of course, a separate uh, discussion on artificial intelligence. Uh, we have some uh, details on that on our booth but specific to the utility industry, the way we see it is we are today looking at, uh, we are running a pilot at, you know, some of these like fall, HD fall prediction, revenue forecasting, so on and so forth. And of course we would like to, we have not done any work, but I'd like to mention it here, that yes, we'd like to look at blockchain for some of our uh, business operations. Was that quick? Thank you. Very good. Thank you.